All right, welcome everyone to the ECHT seminar on machine computation in homotopy theory. And today's talk is by Christian Nessa, who will tell us about the Steenrod algebra cohomology with Jakob slash Sage. Yes, hello, uh, and thank you very much for the for the invitation to give this talk. Um, this is a really a, a project that, that has I started this in two thousand and four. The, the Yako project, and it's been been um, in incubation ever since. Um, it, it never really reached the stage where I wanted to make an official release. So um, most of the stuff that I'm going to show you has been available for, for, for a long time, but it, probably just nobody nobody knew about it. And I'm, I'm actually here to, to just advertise a couple of things. So. Um, I was thinking about calling this NASA Adventures and Advertising or something like this. Well, one thing that I'm obviously uh, going to advertise is my own code, the Jakob code. But also, um, I really want to advertise Sage as, uh, as a wonderful piece of software for, for doing uh, research in mathematics. So Sage has this nice um, mission statement, creating a viable, free, open source alternative to Magma, Maple, Mathematica, and MATLAB. And um, I, I really hope that many of you do have experience with, with Sage or are using it. If not, that's not, also not a problem. I'm certainly using Sage for essentially everything that I'm doing in research. So this, this is um, cohomology um, calculations, uh, for example. It's, but I also did some, some algebraic geometry, differential geometry, some, some D algebra stuff. And Sage is really, a, um, a, a, a general purpose computer algebra system. It's freely available. It's a cost-free alternative to, to these four other things. Um, and it, it does cover a lot of mathematics. Whenever I'm trying to learn something new, I, I discover that, that Sage uh, already knows this. And um, so th this is one thing. And, and my own contribution here is something that I've developed outside of Sage. It's called Jakob for um, yet another cohomology program. And it is some specialized uh, piece of software related to um, X groups over the Steenwood algebra. So, so it's a framework for, for constructing modules, um, computing resolutions, um, creating charts and, 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 and so on. And I, I actually started with this Jakob thing in 2004. That was uh, shortly before Sage actually started. I got aware um, of the existence of Sage in 2009. I got a very kind invitation to, to the Sage Days 15 conference in Seattle by, by uh, William Stein and John Palmieri. And, and that, that's when I started to think about um, actually creating an interface to, to micro multi programs in, in Sage. And um, already in 2009, there was a first working version. Um, of which you certainly never heard of because it, it was never really officially released. Um, the point of this talk is that I want to give you an, uh, an idea, of, first of all, about the architecture, what is in it, um, how my code relates to Sage and so on. But, but I try to keep this short because the, the, the heart of this talk is uh, probably going to be just a demonstration, a live demonstration of what you can do and how you can do it and what you cannot do and what you shouldn't do and all of these things. So, so from, from my point of view, the, the, uh, when I started with, with, with this Jakob project in 2004, I was, um, the, the goal was to create a library that is really very specialized to uh, the task of computing um, a minimal resolution of uh, either the Steenrod algebra or maybe a sub-algebra of the Steenrod algebra. The idea was to cover, um, to, to cover not just the case of the prime two, but also uh, small primes. So um, there, there, there are some built-in limitations. For example, I think I'm using um, uh, an eight, um, an, 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 a vector of length eight with eight-bit integers uh, at the prime two for Steenroot operations. So you have a theoretical limit of uh, dimension 255. And, there are also limits for, for the primes two, three, five, seven, and 11. And um, in, in, in fact, the limits are there, so you can't get much bigger than 11. And all, all of this is, is really meant to be um, a library that is fast, 
um, it's, it's not supposed to be user friendly because it's not actually supposed to be used by users. It's really just a toolbox that other programs can use um, in order to do computations. And it, um, I, I call it a Tickle library because it is really designed to be used through that uh, programming language, Tickle, which is a scripting language, one of the really old scripting languages that. Um, no, no, it doesn't have, have a lot of popularity, but it is a great invention. I'm, I'm a big fan. So as I said, the library really just wants to do a couple of um, very specialized things. So um, when you compute a resolution of, of the Steenward algebra, then you're dealing with um, three modules over the Steenward algebra. Um, you have a, a basis um, where the basis has a grading. So you have uh, actually shifted copies of the Steenward algebra. You have a map between these three modules, and you need to compute this, this map or the, the matrix of that map. And you need to compute the kernel and the image and, and um, compute a basis of the quotient um, kernel modular image in order to um, design a, a, a minimal resolution. And in fact, in my, in my PhD, I developed um, um, an, an algorithm that allows you to just um, cut up these matrices into, into smaller pieces. Um, and, and, and this library also knows how to, how to do this. So this is knowledge that is built in, and this is part of what that library wants to be able to do. And um, it's, it's a very stable library in the sense that I designed it in 2004. And um, maybe I should make the point, but when I started the project in 2004, that was about 10 years after I first designed a, um, a program for Steenwood algebra cohomology. So it really felt like, should I really do another project? Should I really start a new one? That's, that's why I felt I could call this thing yet another library for yet another cohomology program. And one of the things that I really want to do um, at some point in the future is to, to use um, the, the graphic card uh, in, in, in your computer in order to do, to, to do these computations. So I, I started with this project, um, something like, I think, 2018 or so. Um, the, the background was that I was contemplating of doing um, real motivic uh, computations. And in, in, in that case, you don't just have one X chart. Instead, you have to work through the, the rho Bockstein spectral sequence. So essentially, you have for every power of rho, you have a, a new cohomology calculation. And I was just imagining that this would be it would really need a powerful engine. Uh, and, and, and so I actually started to, to lay the foundations for, for using the open compute language, OpenCL, in order to, um, to use the graphic card if you have one. Because you all know that you have this, the CPU, which is quite powerful, but the GPU is, is actually a lot more powerful, at least if you, if you give it a very specialized task, which, is, uh, um, which fits its, its capabilities. And in this particular case, my plan is to, um, to move the computation of the matrices, um, which is really doing lots of multiplications in the Steenwood algebra, to move this part into the graphic uh, processing unit and to keep the linear algebra on, on the CPU. So they can actually also work in parallel to so get a really good, good thing. But this is, I, I, I started in, in 2018, this, and then I uh, actually stopped something like 2018.5. <laughs> Um, some, it's something I want to do in the future, but I haven't really done a lot of this. One thing that might be um, important to know if you, if, you, if you want to judge the capabilities of my programs is this philosophy that I really only want to compute one resolution. I, I really only want to compute the resolution of the ground field. So um, no, no other resolutions. If you're interested in X over module M, then my, my, my approach is that you take you just take the smash product uh, of your minimal resolution with that module M, that is again a free resolution, and you can use this to compute X of M. And the, the benefit is that if, if, if M is really small, say if, if M has uh, two or three cells, then you just take three copies of your resolution, you, you put these together, and um, you have to do a, a, a really tiny computation compared to the task of actually creating a full new resolution. And you, you, you can do this uh, in order to compute the X of M by using the, the smash product C star smash M. You can also uh, compute um, X to uh, over A of M comma N if you take this uh, other smash product down there. 
And th this is a certain limitation. I mean, I, I know that Bob has been doing, uh, Bob and John have been doing uh, X calculations for finitely presented modules. And I'm, I think those are probably out of scope for this because they tend to be big modules. You might sometimes be able to, to reduce those to uh, via a change of rings isomorphism to something smaller over a smaller subalgebra, but most of the time not. So this is just out of scope for currently for, for what my program can do. Um, as I, I said, I wanted to, to, to advertise a couple of things. So, so one thing that I want to advertise is, is Sage because Sage is really great. The other thing is my, my, my code, which is okay. And then, then there's the SQLite database, which is really a piece of software that is really great. Um, it's, um, it's actually the most widely used database engine on the planet. Uh, if you have a mobile phone, you have um, probably 15 different databases uh, on, your, on your phone. You have the same one on your TV, every, they're, they're, they're everywhere. And, and um, this is really a very convenient way to store data. Um, so, so, so I decided that this is also the right thing to store a, a resolution, for example. It, it's good for a variety of reasons. It's very stable. It's highly tested. Um, it has this uh, interface, or, it, or the, it, it is an SQL database. Uh, so you can use that uh, SQL language in order to, uh, to investigate the data that you keep in there, which is really quite intuitive. And it is very robust. It, it actually has a military pedigree, I think. I think this was developed for the Navy. Um, it was supposed to be a database that works in, in, uh, in, a, in an environment where you don't have a, a system administrator who can restore your database if somebody just pulled the plug. Um, so it's indestructible and foolproof. And this is actually very good when you design a, um, a computer algebra system because um, suppose you're, you're computing a resolution, the resolution takes too long, you hit control C in order to just stop everything. Then if, if, if you do things naively, you might be in the middle of writing your, your, your resolution to the file system and everything is corrupted. And, and this can't happen if you have this, uh, if, you, if you have such a database system. So this, um, this definitely adds to the, uh, to the convenience of um, and the reliability of the overall system. And actually, I think it's, it's, it might also be good if, if you, I don't know, if some people are really doing detailed um, X computations and you keep an Excel sheet or whatever of your computations. I always imagine that if, 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 if I was doing this, I would probably also do this in an, in an SQLite database. So um, that brings me to the next part. So this, this, this was about this, this Steenrod Tickle library, which is the computational uh, core of the system. Um, and as I said, it, it is not really meant to be to be uh, used by end users. Um, so it's it's not something that you would use directly. Instead, you would use uh, Sage. And um, in, in 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 between my code and Sage is is a lot of glue code. I'm calling it here. It's actually one. It, it's not just glue code in the sense that it's negligible. It's um, it's it's an essential piece of the system because um, Jacob is, is is at its core also a Sage package, which implements a framework to work with uh, modules over the Steenwood algebra to construct modules um, in, in a convenient way. And all of this is, is, is implemented in, in, in this layer. And so Sage already natively has support for, for the Steenwood algebra that was implemented um, right at the beginning, I think, of Sage almost by, by, by John Palmieri. Um, and this, this little session that you're seeing there is really when you start Sage and you just say, give me the Steenwood algebra in the RDEM basis, which is the admissible monomial basis. That is this line. But, but, but um, Sage also knows about uh, doing it in the Milner basis, which is uh, down here. And you can easily convert between the two. Uh, maybe I should say that uh, I, I have a clear preference for the Milner basis um, when it's... Uh, about actual, actual uh, computations because uh, for, for the Milner basis, you really have a streamlined multiplication algorithm. So if you want to do high performance computations, then my impression is that the, the Milner basis is the, is the way to go. 
Yes, and what, what I'm contributing to, to Sage in, in, in that package is a, a specialized um, notion of a module. <laughs> now, now, Sage definitely has a notion of a module. Um, but uh, I, I found when I, when I started to develop my code in 2009, there, there were certain things that were just missing. So the uh, very basic thing is um, that if you want to work with modules uh, of the Steenroot algebra, then you need graded objects. And back, back when I started, Sage didn't have a notion of grading. There, there, there was code lying around, which was uh, scheduled for inclusion in Sage. But it was pretty clear that this is um, a notion of a grading that is not uh, sufficient for what I wanted to do. Because it really starts with the fact that uh, in, in the Steenroot algebra, you have uh, at least three gradings. You have um, the internal degree, then for odd primes, you have this um, exterior algebra Bockstein degree, which is also important. And then if you, if you think about doing or, or working with differential modules or with resolutions, then you also need the homological degree. And uh, I, I think Sage really had only has a concept of single, single grading for the objects. Um, uh, so, 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 so this is one reason why, why I need to come up with, with something external to, 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 to Sage, that we need three gradings. Um, as, as topologists, we are also used to, to really operate on the gradings. So um, we are used to taking suspensions and truncations, or you might multiply the grading by two in order to go from real projective space to complex projective space or whatever. Uh, and, and, and these are just up to, uh, operations that are not part of, of, of uh, the this original Sage framework. Um, maybe one should say, you, you, you're probably all familiar with that famous, fantastic quote of Whitehead, that, uh, that uh, combinatorics is the slums of topology. <laughs> Certainly every combinatorialist knows, knows that quote. Um, in, when you're doing Sage development, it's it's uh, th th this really came to came to my mind a lot because um, Sage has a very active and very important group of combinatorics pe people, and 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 they they were right there at the beginning of Sage, and they they, they uh, implemented lots of the really good uh, foundations. Um, um, among them, the gradings, and then also um, the, the whole category system, as they call it, for organizing mathematics. But of course, they, they, they implemented it with a view to the things that they need. So if you, if, if, I suppose if you are doing combinatorics and you have the, I don't know, symmetric functions or something like this, that, that is graded and you, you never change that grading. You never dream of uh, cutting it off somewhere, adding a number or something like this. So that's just not something that is in scope for, for combinatorics. And, and the final point is that um, if, if you want to, write code that just takes an arbitrary uh, differential graded module and do something with it, then you must be able to, to uh, introspect that module. That module must be able to tell you uh, what, what is its bounding box? Is it really infinitely extended in homological degrees minus infinity to plus infinity, or is it just three different degrees or so? And this is also something that you require from a, from a good notion of a grading. Um, and one reason why I, why I needed to come up with, with my own uh, own thing. Uh, another and maybe, maybe minor point is that um, if you want to do um, cohomology calculations x to x of m by um, taking a minimal resolution c star, smashing it with a module, then um, treating this as a free resolution, then you need somehow to use this isomorphism down here where you uh, express the, the smash product, meaning the tensor product with the di diagonal action as uh, the tensor product with the left action, because the right-hand side is visibly free and that's uh, a fact that you're going to use. And when, when you actually do this, uh, when, when you have a, a resolution C star and you look at the, the term and the differential, which is an, an AG of this form, and you find that this isomorphism, it, it, it really requires you to take uh, the conjugate of a Milner basis element and let this act on your module. And um, the, the, the conjugation in the, in the Steenroot algebra is really a very um, computationally expensive operation. So you, you, you don't want to compute this in the way it is written. You don't want to compute a double prime and then the con con conjugate and then the action. You want to allow your, your module to uh, have an optimized implementation for this, for performance reasons. 
And um, a very good example here is um, if you look at projective spaces, um, in, in, in that case for, for real projective space, you, you have a very simple and direct formula for the action of a, of a steenode operation on a power of the generator. Well, this is as easy as you can hope it to be. You just compute a little monomial, uh, multinomial coefficient, and that's it. And you actually also have an equally uh, a direct and, and immediate formula for the conjugate action. And so if, if, if you're going to implement the, the real projective space in this system, and you want to, to compute a cohomology, then you really want to also implement this uh, directly. So this is just one one thing that I was uh, that, that I need to do in, in my in my module framework. I want to allow modules to implement the conjugate action directly for performance performance reasons. Um, if you if you've been playing around with Sage, then you probably know that Sage has um, has uh, what is called a category system. These 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 categories have names that are remotely they they, they are a bit like the, the categories that you know in, in mathematics. They are not meant to be uh, exact images of these categories. It's just um, a, a class system or meta class framework that sits on top of the usual class system in, 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 in Python or in Sage. For example, it has a category of algebras with bases over the finite field of size two. And that is a class or which is one of the base classes in, in, in this case is of an object. Um, that, that implements certain functions that are special to things that are algebras with bases. And you can, you can see here, I, I, I just imported um, the complex projective space from, from my system, from the Jakob modules um, um, directory. And you, you can look at the categories and you can see it is a big mixture. It has, on top it has my uh, category of Jakob left module algebras. Um, then it has some Sage categories, then it has some Jakob categories, then some Sage categories, then it has some, uh, and so on. It's a mixture. And actually, the, the one thing that I really wanted to say at this point is that my, my, my Jakob package is a really very intrusive package. Uh, that, that means if you, um, the, the moment you import uh, this, this thing into, into your Sage uh, system, it actually be, immediately begins to redefine certain Sage internals. Um, and you you actually <laughs> immediately lose all all warranty or also that, that, that you ever might have. So if you, if you if you find a bug in 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 Sage when my package is loaded, then you should try to reproduce it without my package. Otherwise, um, there's a good chance that it was introduced in in my code. Um, so the the fact that it. The reason why I'm so intrusive is that I needed to uh, fix a couple of things that I consider to be bugs in Sage, but that Sage doesn't think are bugs. Some things that are just, um, um, I, my feeling was I'm, I'm hitting bugs in Sage from time to time that only I am hitting because I'm maybe not using it in the way it was intended to, to be used or so. And then it's really not so easy to get a bug fix into Sage. Or, beginning with the fact to agree, is this bug, is this not just uh, something that's, in, yeah. Anyway, um, this is what it is. I'm, I'm, I'm just patching lots of Sage code. Um, yes, yeah, so one final thing that I wanted to say is that, um, what, what, what did I want to say? Well, obviously in Jakob, I have a class for, for ground field resolutions because I, I already said that uh, this is how I want to organize things, only have a ground field resolution, and then everything else is defined through smash product resolutions. And then when you, when you look at this session, um, then um, you should take a look at the slides when I put them up on my, on my homepage because this is not the final version that I'm having here, unfortunately. What I wanted to show is that this begins with something in Sage. Steamroad algebra is a class in Sage. Then you're taking a resolution. This is also a Sage code. Uh, the, the resolution method is from my package. When, when you start, when you when you, when you call the compute method, that compute method is implemented in Sage. But starting from here on, it it really calls into into a tickle interpreter in the background, and it calls this uh, tickle steamroad library. This is where the resolution is then computed and stored in the SQLite database. 
And then finally, when you when, when, when you when you take that resolution C and you ask for the differential on a generator, then um, well, as, as, as the end user of the system, all you care about is that you get the right value. But what happens is that this is uh, this method is calling back through this TK interface package to Tickle, which is calling into SQLite, which is looking into the database. It's going to it's fetching the differential. It's giving that answer back to Tickle, and it's giving that answer back to Python. And then you see this. So this is really. Uh, a chart where you can see things that you can't see. And actually, this is almost everything that I wanted to say about Jakob itself. Um, the next thing to explain is um, how do you actually get started? How do you how do you um, run Sage? And and there are actually plenty of different versions. And um, those of you that actually are using Sage might be might be using any of these combinations. And the, the good news is that you can combine uh, my package with all of these uh, variants. It just might not be so straightforward. Um, my, my biggest fear always is that um, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one in, in, in the uh, mathematics uh, community uh, who, who doesn't own a Mac. <laughs> I, I have a Linux machine and I'm working on Linux. That's, that's my environment. And everybody else seems to have a MacBook. Um, it, it does work on a Mac, uh, but I, I, I cannot really provide you with an uh, insula installation package. Uh, what, what I'm going to suggest to you is to use um, Docker um, to, to, to run Sage. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard of Docker. It's um, a framework. Um, it's similar to running a virtual machine uh, on your machine. It's not exactly this, but um, that, that, that's a good description. Um, it's it's really very popular uh, also in, 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 in businesses. If you want to run a service and you don't want to install it, you just want to run it. And what you install is you install the Docker software and then you just tell Docker, please run this code. And this is actually something that you can do with, with, with my code as well. So you can, um, this, is, um, this is an example session that I, that I ran. You have this command where you tell Docker to run an image, which is uh, cnasa slash Jakob Sage. This image is stored uh, on a server that belongs to the Docker company, HashiCorp. The first time you, you execute this command, um, it's going to download the software. And that is about, that's uh, a little over four gigabytes now. Um, and in case you're wondering, this is, um, what is contained in there. This is a, a, a very basic Linux system, a Ubuntu system, which is uh, 80 megabytes big, I think. And it is a full build of uh, Sage, and that takes it up to <laughs> something like four gigabytes. And uh, then on top of that, there's, there's my code, which is maybe another gigabyte, another, another <laughs> I don't know, another dozens of megabytes, but not so much. And um, just in case you're wondering, the, the, the one thing that you don't get uh, if, you, if you download these four gigabytes of, uh, day of, of, of software is you, you don't get a pre-built resolution. So my, my, my software comes without any resolution. Everything that you do is uh, computed on the fly. And you can see, uh, and, and maybe I should say that the last time I tried this, uh, it, it, it took about five minutes to download, download this uh, thing in, in the first run. And the, the good thing about Docker is that it's really supported um, on many platforms. Um, I, I think you can run it on, on a Mac. Um, you can certainly run it on Windows, although I also heard that you might need to have the professional edition. Um, and then, then there's another thing. If, if you intend to run this on a, uh, on a, on a shared system at the university, one of the university computers, then you might find that uh, the administrators don't want you to use Docker. Because um, this is um, it has a reputation of being a bit dangerous. Because when you when you when your Docker software really runs as the super user and it is just protected by the framework from doing bad things, and and there is actually an alternative which is called Podman, which is uh, developed by Red Hat Linux, and um, if if you want to use this on a shared system somewhere, 
and the administrators say that they're, they're not going to let you use Docker, you can ask about Podman because this, this is fruitless, um, so it's a little bit less dangerous. And this is now the magical thing. I, I, I'm, I'm going to press the button and we now have the intermission. So you're now free to fetch popcorn and uh, everything like this while I uh, try to figure out how to um, share the right screen now. Let me see. How do I, how do I unshare the screen? Does anybody have a hint? It should be in the same place where you shared the screen originally. <laughs> this, um, that's probably... Sure, no, go into Zoom. Yes. Ah, return to the meeting. Yes, 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 yes. And a new out. Oh, okay, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So I think... This could be, oh no, this was the wrong, <laughs> this, uh, I can click on this, okay. And um, wonderful, well, what you're now seeing is a terminal and um, you're seeing a terminal and you can see the command line. Let's, let's clear this up to make it, to make it a bit nicer. Actually, can I, oh, just give me a second. I can probably, uh, what can I do here? Close tabs, detach. Let me go back to unsharing this screen because that is the wrong screen. Um, is it? Okay, so we're back here. Um, I was thinking about uh, thinking of making this nicer, uh, but uh, I can't find that other window. So you could see that I've, I've not just um, executed this command line that I that I showed you. Docker run, and then I um, um, started this uh, Sinatra Jacob Sage, and what you're seeing now is is just a regular Sage session. So in particular. Um, if I, um, you, you have the Steenrod algebra, for example, this had been implemented by, by John Palmieri, as I said. And um, let's, let's just give it a name. Uh, and if, 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 if now, if you, if you want uh, to compute a resolution, for example, of, of that Steenrod algebra, then what you do is you, you really just um, ask for the resolution and you find um, it, it's not there because it, it's not there because you first have to load my package. You do that with import Jacob. And once you do this, um, well, the way you work with Sage is uh, either you know what you want to do or you don't know. And in case you don't know, then you just hit the top key. And the top key is going to give you an option of what, what might be there. So A as an object of the Steenrod algebra, it has really lots of methods. So it has, um, Actually, this is uh, interesting. This is the, the reduced power operation. These two are box steins, addition table, and so on. This is all stuff from, from Sage that you just um, you can ask for the characteristic, for example, seven, simple thing. But what, what we want is a resolution. And what you do is to just hit R and then you get uh, a resolution here. And what happens is, um, well, what you get back is just a handle for the resolution. Nothing has been computed, nothing happened. You just have, you can give a name to it. And you can actually directly um, start using it. You can just ask, well, what is X335 uh, or so of, 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 of this uh, thing? For this, you would, you would now have to know what the method is in order to get the, the basis of the, uh, of the resolution. It's, it's called free basis. Uh, this is, um, in, in Sage, Sage itself, you would just ask for the basis. Um, then, then since I have this other um, framework for gradings, you would normally always ask for a graded basis, um, which you can do here as well. You can ask for the graded basis. Let's do this. Graded basis in homological degree three, and let's say dimension not bigger than 10 or so. If you do this, 
we get an immediate answer, which is uh, really a lazy answer. It's really, again, it's just a handle for, 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 for the answer that you want to have. If you want to see, see this thing, then you have to really either list it, sort it, or do something with it. <laughs> okay, so the first thing that you're seeing is um, it doesn't work here. And max is 10, does it work this way? No. Okay, so my code obviously thinks that this is uh, infinite. Ah, it, it, it thinks it is infinite because I'm using n when I should be using t. So this is one of the things that you need to know. The internal degree is very often called t, but um, of course, in most of the time, you're not thinking about t, you're thinking about t minus s, which I call n. In, in this particular case, n is not understood. Uh, it, it just ignores n and then it refuses to list the full uh, resolution because it is infinite. But what you just saw in the, the graded basis in uh, dimension 10 is empty. 19 also empty. I don't have a good hand, but you could maybe. Ah, okay. If, if you say that the maximum T degree, then you get something that you recognize as elements of um, the basis of a free module of the Steenwood algebra. You have a generator G33, and you have box dines, reduced powers, and, and so on. And if, if, you, if you want to do a serious computation, then you're going to say, uh, compute this thing up to, let's say, as max 10 and, um, um, no, I, I don't dare to take n again. Does n work here? <laughs> yes, n works. So this has now been computed. And um, actually, the, the, what, what you then might want to do is to look at it. Now, if I do this now, I think you're not going to see anything because, uh, Yes, you're not going to see anything because I'm not sharing that part of the screen. So, uh, just a second. Let's um, let's see if I can I can sh make that a bit better. So can you actually see my screen now? Yeah, it looks yes. like we're seeing your desktop maybe. Okay, that's that, that's actually good. I, I just noticed because I was switching that there are questions in the chat by Bob. What happens if you ask C differential and the result is not yet in the database? It is automatically computed. So this is, um, everything is lazily computed once you ask for it. That's, that's um, the idea at least and in most of the cases. And, and what are the bugs in states which I run into other really corner cases? I can, maybe I can at a later point. Yeah, let's talk about that later. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you're seeing my screen now, you're seeing that session. So you, you could see that I, I asked for a graphical user interface and that shell system asked me to, whether it's okay to open a window and then you see that the window is actually opening. And you can see this is what we just computed, and we can we can um, change the scale with some keys and the aspect ratio with another and so on. And I suppose you you recognize this as uh, x to the Steenode algebra the prime seven. And and this this uh, this, this chart viewer is a pretty imperfect thing, but. Um, so you, you, you can choose which lines you want to see, for example, H1, H2. Uh, and once you have them, you can choose how to display them, solid or not solid and so on. So I can, um, yeah, I'll get back to it a little bit later. So the, 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 this is how you how you do uh, deal with resolutions. You just ask for it and you have it, and it's get, it, get, it gets computed once you um, either say uh, please compute it for me, or you just uh, ask for um, for a certain by degree. So, so what, what do you do if you want to compute a module? Well, you have to first lo look at um, um, well, you first have to define the module, and, and Jakob comes with a couple of a couple of predefined um, 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 modules. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. Um, 
the, the one thing that is interesting at, 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 the, uh, at an odd prime is, is uh, <laughs> the one thing on the classifying spaces, because this, this sounds like you would find all of these classifying spaces that you care about, but the only thing that you find is actually BZP. Uh, so let's let's take a look at this. We import B. Oops, oh no. What's that? Ah, oh, spaces. Let's import B the P. And then you can uh, take B the P seven. And of course, this is a module um, over over that Dino algebra. And um, let's let's give this a name. It has some variables, you know, it's, uh, it has this class in dimension one, uh, y and a class in dimension two, x. And um, then when you, when you try to look at this thing, let's say, give me everything up to dimension 20. Again, if you just uh, ask for the greatest basis, you get a lazy answer. But if you, if you sort this, then you get um, what you expect. So you get uh, y x, y times x, x squared y, and so on. And you, you could now just compute uh, x to, um, of this module. For this, you would take the resolution that was, no, you don't take the resolution. You take the steam with algebra, and you just, just ask for x of this x. Again, a lazy answer, so we need to give it a name. And um, again, you can just ask for, um, for some specific value, you can just ask for what, what, what is this group uh, in uh, coordinates uh, in logical degree three, internal degree 35. Again, a lazy answer. But when you list it, then you hear, okay, it's empty. X, X in that by degree is empty, 36, empty, 37, empty, oh, 38 at least, it has something one class. Um, if, you, if you look at the, uh, at the graphical user interface for this thing, you, <laughs> you see it's actually, uh, it doesn't have so much. It has this one class that we just computed and apparently nothing else. That's because it really has just computed that part of the smash product uh, resolution and, and the homology. So, uh, it's um, if, if if you want more, you have to ask for more. So if you if you ask for uh, let's say S max three, uh, I think N is again a better choice. Let's say fifty. Then it's going to uh, compute this thing, and you can hit the reload button and uh, change the scale. And now you have um, X, the, the beginning of X of, of, of your module. And um, actually, well, a really nice feature here, uh, I don't know how, how you use this. You can look at this as the homology, that's, that's what you see now, but you can also look at, uh, at it as a, as a smash product. So let me change the scale a bit. So, because what, what's happening is that um, the program takes the free resolution and the generators um, of, of the ground field and then takes one copy of this for every generator of your module. So, these, these are the generators that you see in the bottom. And then it computes the cancellations that take place. And you can see that many things are, are canceling out. And the, the stuff that's left then is just the homology here. Yeah, so actually that, that is, um, um, that's actually everything that I wanted to say about odd primes. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very much not, a, not an odd prime person. So it's something that my program can do, but it's not something that I think about a lot. But we, ha we, had, th we had this very nice talk um, two weeks ago by Dominic Calver on, um, on his X computations. And, and, and they were involving uh, generalized brown, brown jitler spectra and the TMF homology of those. So I, I, I was then wondering um, how I would do this in, 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 in my code. So um, it, it begins by, um, you, need, you need to construct this, this uh, generalized 
brown, jitter, brown jitter spectrum BL1. And um, so, so here's, here's how you could do this. You could, um, first of all, let's, let, let's immediately say we, we're taking the Steenwood algebra at the prime two, and we are taking the profile three to one. So this is uh, the thing that gives you uh, the, the sub algebra A of two, the one that is relevant for TMF. And we're going to take the dual Steenrod algebra as a module over the Steenrod algebra. This is one of the things that is um, implemented. So if we say dual Steenrod algebra at the prime two, and then, well, that's it. And you can, um, of course, this is um, the polynomial algebra on, on, on the xis, and, and this is the, the xi then, and you can just, um, actually, my, my, my first idea about what is this brown jitter spectrum is that you take xi3, and you, then you just act, act on it, and you take the, the submodule spanned by, by xi3. And it turned out that this is actually not, um, not exactly uh, correct. The, the, the inject variables method, this is really something that Sage, uh, it, it's all over Sage. It, it just means that you, uh, you get a handle for these generators. So this, this uh, oops. the dual Steenrod algebra has generators, uh, C, and you could access this uh, C, I think, I can't. Um, the, the inject variables method really gives you a global symbol xi on, that, that you can use on the command line. Um, so actually, so, so we, I would now like to take, like to take the submodule of the dual Steenwood algebra generated by C3. So, um, and you can actually do this, you just have to know where to find that submodule method, and that is really hidden in an ugly place. It's hidden in the in the modules morph module uh, class. Morph morph is for morphism. Morphism module is where I have code that implements kernels, images, um, co-kernels, and so on. And when you take a submodule, that is really the image of a map from a free module into your module. That's why the submodule method um, is is hidden in there. So if we have submodule, so we can take the submodule of this dual Steenrod algebra generated by this Xi3. And we can give it a name and call it X. Now, if you, if you, if you uh, ask X for the graded basis, I mean, it's finite. And if you list or sort it, then you get um, this collection of elements. Um, and it, it superficially looks like the thing that we want to have. It's actually the dual of what we want to have. Um, you're going to believe me. So what we really should have done is we should have taken um, a zeta three, not not c three. So the conjugate. And we can we can get this if we just ask for everything in uh, in d in degree minus seven. And if we list this. Then these are really all monomials in the in the degree minus uh, seven. And of, of course, we happen to know that the zeta is really just the sum of all these. So we just take the sum of those. And then this zeta is um, what we want to do, or want, want to take. So let's go back. Um, maybe I should say that you can navigate using arrow keys. So this is very convenient. Um, so let's let's take zeta three instead of um, instead of the thing. Look at the basis, and this is a tiny bit more complicated. And now we no, 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 now you can see that this is really what we want to have um, uh, for the brown uh, brown jitler um, module. In order to 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 get an even better view of this. Um, <laughs> which is not the real reason why this class exists. There, there is this class called uh, um, a Serkatan module. And I have no real idea why I chose that name. Maybe because there's the Serkatan basis of the Steenwood algebra based on admissible modules. And this is a module implementation where you can just say, uh, I have 
generators A, B, C, D in certain dimensions, and I have the following actions of the square J's. This gives you a module. Um, um, and, and actually, <laughs> the way to show, to show you this is to, to, to um, just look at the source code. You can get the source code of many things in Sage by just um, using two question marks and then hitting enter. In, 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 uh, so here you get the, the way I implemented these Sakata modules. Whenever you see something that starts with tests and two columns, you, you're looking at a so-called doc test, a documentation test. So this is code that um, can be executed um, as a regression test, just to make sure that when, whenever you change something in the implementation or so, that, that uh, things still work. And um, so to, this is one of the tests that I'm, that I'm running where you, um, you define a module, it's a Katan module over the Steamroad algebra and you, um, you specify a basis of uh, these five elements and then you set some operations and so on. And you get a, a module that you can use uh, in, with, with Jakob. Um, and, and actually, one, one, one nice feature of, 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 these, uh, of, of this class, the Qatar module, is that you can actually clone a, any other module in the form of a Sir Qatar module. And that gives you, um, first of all, a different view of that module, a different enumeration of the bases, a, a list of all the non-trivial um, square j's. And it also gives you a different implementation of the module, which uh, probably has a better performance when you, when you try to uh, carry out an X computation. So in, in this case, we, we can take the Sakatan module clone of this X and call it maybe Z. And then you see, um, you see this Z, the, 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 this module really has these four uh, generators. Um, the G7 is within dimension minus seven, within dimension minus three, minus one, and so on. And if you look at the operations, then you get a list of all of the non-trivial square J's that exist. Uh, and this actually is the thing that, the, the, that, that was called uh, the, the generalized brown Jittler um, module. So in, instead of calling it Z, let's, let's directly call it B01. And you, you could now, now go ahead and just uh, ask for, um, for this A2 X. A, A2 was that, uh, no, it wasn't. Ah, A. A is the sub of algebra. Okay. You can just ask for uh, x of this v01, call this e, compute this, uh, let's say, I don't want to waste too much time, so let's make it a small computation, um, let's say 20. Uh, yeah. I probably should have timed this. I have a couple of other time computations that I wanted to carry out. Maybe I got carried away. So what's happening here is that um, the, the, the first part here was the begin, was the computation of the minimal resolution of the algebra um, A of two. So the ground field resolution. Um, from, from this point on, uh, the, the code was uh, trying to compute the smash product uh, um, resolution. So it's computing a basis of the smash product. It's computing um, smash fragments. Uh, so these are really parts of the differential in, 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 in that smash product resolution. And then finally, the homology. So and then if you, if you again look at, um, at, uh, at x, then you can see what thing that, um, that has been computed. And again, it's nice to, to, to just look at this uh, in the form of a smash product where you can see that you have these four classes of your module in the, in the bottom and you, then you see how the, how the cancellation happens. And actually, um, let, 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 let's pick a class here. Let's, um, where do we have a module? Something moderately interesting. Uh, two five oh, two two five could be an interesting class. Do we have something in two five? Yes, this is a good test. I I, I just I was just guessing the name of the generator in homological degree two and internal degree five, and it's called G of two five. You can ask this thing 
for its, its cycle. So this is really the way it is represented in the uh, smash product resolution. And what, what you get then is you have um, a tensor product. So the, the hash here is the way that uh, tensors are, uh, are printed in Sage. G3 is from, from that uh, BL1. BL1 was the, the class uh, in there. And, and G of 2.8 is, is a generator of the A of 2 resolution. So you, you can actually look into, into, into in, in, inside to see how this is defined because this might be, might be relevant for your, for your computation. Yes, and actually, the, the, it, let, let me close this window. And actually, the, the nice thing um, or the challenge in, 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 in Dominic's talk from, from two weeks ago was that he, he took a, a smash power, uh, a tensor power of this module, and then um, um, an, an item potent in the group algebra or in the symmetric group of, of three elements to split this thing. And I, I was wondering how to do this in Sage. And it's actually straightforward to do. So let's, let's just take the tensor product of uh, three copies of this BO1. So this is now, yeah, that's how it prints. And you can you, you can look at look, look at this module, for example, if you just uh, look at the full basis of this thing, create a basis and you print G and you get a, a, a list of all of these um, all of these basis elements. And the, the challenge now is to, to, to um, implement this, this idempotent map, the self map. And so let's, let, let's start by implementing a map, which is just the identity on, 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 on you. The way you do this is you, you say you, you compute a module morphism, codomain is uh, you itself. And then you have to say uh, what to do on a basis element. And the, the one thing here that you just need to know is um, how, how um, these um, uh, how these modules work. These are all um, combinatorial free modules, which means that you have um, um, your, your basis is really a family where, where you have an, an, an index uh, which is called the key. Um, and what you need to give here in, in order to just give um, get the, the identity map is you say you take take the key and give me the corresponding basis element that's called the corresponding monomial on that key. <coughs> Sorry. So th th this is really the identity and to check that it is the identity we can just um, well, print it maybe. Maybe print it even nicely. So nothing happens here. And <clears throat> so what we need to do is we, we need to be able to to permute uh, to permute the factors. And the way to do this is um, to take apart these these keys. They have actually three components. Uh, so you just say. Uh, you take the second component, that's key one, the third component, that's, and then the first, and that is um, a permutation now. And if you if you look at this result, and when you see uh, G7, tensor G1, tensor G0 is uh, mapped to this permuted thing. And in order to get the item potent, we need to now um, take a sum of, 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 of these gadgets. So what we need <clears throat> we need to do is we need to take, take this thing, then we need to take um, just the square of that permutation. So that's um, key zero, key one. And again, the identity. That is this thing. And now you... Now the map looks like looks like this. So you have things that are visibly fixed and things that are <laughs> visibly shaken. And just to make sure that this is really an Eden potent, you can also just check whether f of g is f of f of g. And it's true, it's it's an Eden potent. And the thing that, that that showed up two weeks ago now was the image of this important. And you can actually just say um, that H be the image of of this thing. 
um, it prints as just image of generic endomorphism. If you want to see what it looks like, you can again just take a, a clone of this module in this form of this uh, Sakatan module. So let's call this uh, J. A tiny bit longer because, um, well, it has to do, do a couple of computations. So carry out all of the uh, Steenrod operations on every basis element, figure out. Um, To figure out the right basis of this um, image and so on. But I, I think it takes about 30 seconds. Uh, of course, I tested this in a different machine. Um, so I, I think it's not going to take 30 minutes in any case. <laughs> it would be fun to see a Steinberg item potent uh, sum end of BZP to some tensor power. <laughs> You should have asked for this maybe yesterday or so, then I could have prepared something. <laughs> but I think for the Steinberg it, it important summons, uh, I, I have it in my head that they somehow relate to Dixon algebras, right? So may, may, maybe because I have support for Dixon algebras in, in, in that package, <laughs> maybe this would be a good substitute. But anyway, here you have this, uh, this image, um, the, the, the thing, and you can ask for, uh, you can again say, for example, inject these variables, and then tell me what is now a square eight acting on G eleven A, for example, and you learn it is G three A. And you can ask for all of the operations that have been computed. Something that that gives you a longer list because it's um, yeah, and of course you can ask for X of this thing. Um, I just wonder how good an idea it is to, uh, well, you can always ask for X, that doesn't take much time. It's also not so long. I, I think, um, I think I actually, um, let's, let's be very modest and just ask for a tiny fragment at the beginning. Maybe I should say that this is a part that actually I think can be improved and should be improved, uh, the, the, this part of the computation, because the, it, currently the code makes lots of round trips um, from Sage, which is implemented in Python to uh, Tickle, where the, the entire orchestration of that computation takes place, then back into, into Python in order to uh, compute uh, an operation on the module. So this is really quite inefficient. I think there's really a lot of room for improvement here. Okay, so so this this worked, and we can. Christian, we're I, we've got it running short on time, so I think we should probably wrap it up here pretty soon. Yes, that that's the perfect part to wrap it up because ah now it's, I, I I actually didn't check uh, how this relates to the charts that Dominic was showing. <laughs> I just hope it's uh, it's vaguely related, and of course you can again do this little trick. I like it a lot, so here you see. How this works. Yes, so, so this is um, actually everything that I wanted to show, I think. I had a couple of more remarks um, about possible omissions and one challenging problem, open problem that has been bothering me since 1998. But you can read about this in the slides when I put them up. Um, so let's just um, stop here. Okay, terrific. Well, first of all, let's thank Christian. And if there are any questions, there was one in the chat about um, injective variables. What does injective variables do? Yes, I, I, I try to explain this. This is something that is quite general in Sage. When you, for example, say you take a polynomial, let's say you can construct a polynomial ring over the rationals in variables A, B, and C. Whoops then A, B, and C really only exist in, in that polynomial ring. Let's call it P. Um, and you can either say, uh, so you, you have it here, you can now just say, give me uh, the, the last element in here, but that's inconvenient. You can just say inject variables. And then uh, Sage really defines three objects with, by the name A, B, and C. And these are now um, 
uh, elements of of this uh, polynomial ring. And the same was true in, in, in case of the modules. So for, for, I did this for BZP with the generators Y and X and for the dual Steenwood algebra where you, you, you need to run, you need to, you, need to, you need to call inject variables in order to get that C function defined. Otherwise it's just a, a method of this object. What was Other the questions? open problem that's in the uh, slides? In the, in the slides, yes. There's a everything related to a psi map. <laughs> psi? It's, it's, Co product? No, 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 no. The, 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 pro, the, the um, one, one thing that I actually maybe I should is uh, what I have is um, a treasured possession. It's, it's, um, uh, it's a list of all 1,600 A module structures on A of two. <laughs> so um, <laughs> you, you can just ask a two module 78, and then you get one of these module structures. Mm -hmm. And um, this, so this is a, of course, we know that there's on, on, on every A of N, you, you have at least one A module structure that was proven by, by uh, Mitchell and Smith and, and uh, Marilyn Roth enumerated all of these 1,600 uh, A module structures on AF2. And what I really would like to have is I would like to have an A module structure on the minimal AF2 resolution. I think this would be uh, just terrific. <laughs> but it is a problem that I identified for myself in 1998 uh, uh, and I've occasionally been thinking about it. I, I, I wish that somebody uh, could make some progress on this. <laughs> I just I thought it, it's really fitting with this uh, topic of, of computation and homotopic theory, because I think it would have good applications. Are the 1600 um, module structures implemented as 100 different square 16s and, uh, and uh, sorry, 16, 16 square 16s and 100 square eights, or are they separated in that fashion? I mean, the variety of possible structures does split as a product. Um, I, I, I don't think so, no. The, the only nice okay. thing I know about these module structures is that you have um, exactly 32 of them and they, they form um, a scene space of dimension five. Exactly 32 of them can be embedded into, uh, where you, into the dual Steenwood algebra where you just use uh, C1, C2 and uh, uh, just, just a single power of C3. Actually, the way I've, I implemented these things is um, as submodules of the dual Steenwood algebra. So hmm. if, if you ask for the bottom class here, then you get it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ah, interesting. Other questions? I don't want to dominate the question session, but I was very curious what problems you ran into, uh, what quote bugs, end quote, you found in Sage, because Svara has uh, an and uh, some of us have uh, run into various issues. One of the things that's difficult is when you're looking at a graded object, um, a typical, if, you're, if you think of it as a, simply a sequence of vector spaces rather than the direct sum of those vector spaces, then zero is, is a bit of a problem because you don't know what degree it has. Any other element, you know what degree it's in. But if you get the object zero, you have to also be told in what degree that zero lies. And uh, this makes people want to use homogeneity, the, the direct sum rather than the, uh, the sequence of, of individual homogeneous parts, because um, that does solve the problem if you use the direct sum. And uh, I was wondering if that was one of them and what the others were. I remember that discussion. I think it was on the Sage mailing list. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I actually, I, I'm, I'm probably uh, sympathizing with the Sage perspective here, but you shouldn't have different zeros in, 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 your, in your different components. But the, the kind of bug that I'm running into is sometimes corner cases in the category system. Mm -hmm. Prepared this, um, the, this talk, I realized I, I, I ran into problems because uh, I, I think Sage insists portions of Cartesian products are Cartesian products or something like this. You know, there, there's just a built-in logic that, um, and, and, and this is not strictly true because if you have a, a sub-object of, uh, of a of direct sum that, 
it doesn't split into the direct sum of subobjects, for example. So this is so the corner cases like these, and then there was things like the uh, application of functions, whether you need an extra cast or not. So there's there's really um, there's a module in, in here in my code. Actually, did I say that all of my code is on GitHub? I probably did, right? Um, but but there's one one file that you can look up look at that's um, startup. Uh, and that is has a, has a function called startup. Right? No, it has some function. Um, it, it, in that function, you can see lots of um, lots of um, hacks that I'm implementing. Another thing is when you take a combinatorial tree module, uh, then the very often the the the, the, the basis is a lazy family. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I was running into huge pains just getting the category of these families right because I, I was trying to run the, the test suite of Sage, and then uh, it really makes a big difference whether your thing uh, claims to be finite or infinite. Um, so the, these are really very annoying thing, <laughs> bug-like things that. Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know how to finish this sentence. Uh, it's, just, it's just a sort of, it's not always a very pleasant experience of debugging these things. Actually, one thing that I didn't say is that um, my, my resolutions, um, I have a, they have a file name. And um, in, 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 in theory, um, for, for example, we, we could we could take uh, the resolution that Bob and, and, and John have computed, um, transform it into the format expected by, by by this code, and then you can just use the the, the resolution that Bob and John are using in in in, in Jacob. So this is actually a, a nice way to interface this. And alternatively, you could just uh, probably easily write an, an exporter where you take a module mm -hmm. definition from from Jacob and, and convert it into the into the data format that the Bob software expects. Oops. Yeah, you're producing exactly what we need, so it'd be easy. It looks mm -hmm. like. And an interface like in through Sage like this is the right way to do these things, of course. Unfortunately, Sage didn't exist in 1992. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm a huge fan. I mean, it's, um, I'm using this for, it's for everything, every research that I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, last chance at any questions? Okay. If not, then we'll thank Christian again. And uh, we will meet again, the machine computation seminar will meet again in a month. And there will also be a regular ECHD research seminar in, in, uh, in two weeks. Okay, uh, thanks everyone.